<laughs> How's it going guys? It's uh, Chris here from Diceheads. Today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. I'm going to be doing a video tutorial uh, for painting a Zuntalis miniature. Uh, this is Ren here from the Fox Guild. We just had a little bit of feedback on the socials from people who've maybe never painted a miniature before. Just wanted a little bit of guidance through the process. So this is for those people, and for perhaps if you're an experienced painter, there might be something here for you as well. Either way, these minis are really, really fun, and the process should be fun as well. So hopefully, we keep it that way uh, through this whole whole video. Uh, I just don't want people stressing when they're painting these minis. You know, going to be using the Transatlantis Games Two Thin Coats paint line. Uh, keep an eye out on the Kickstarter page for Zintalus because there will be a uh, painter's start set with some minis and with the paints releasing soon. So starting with the Black Primer here from a rattle can, there are multiple brands out there. But basically the reasoning for me, for I, I like to start with a Black Primer, it's just because if there's any parts of the miniature that I can't reach with the brush, um, I know that they'll just be left black, which sort of just looks like shadow. So I don't have to worry about contorting the brush to try and get it into crevices and stuff like that because just leave it in shadow going in with a bit of dry brushing here on a texture palette you can just use a bit of textured wood or something I wouldn't recommend using a uh, kitchen towel or tissue or anything like that because that can make the paint really chalky don't really like that so just drying the brush off uh, clearing off most of the paint off the brush uh, on the texture palette here and, and dry brushing on the red this is going to be sort of an undercoat for the fur which will go on with the uh, rust orange fur which I'm going to do now uh, but basically you want to get like a sort of uneven texture with the dry brushing and that's the that's the effect that it gives as opposed to just completely filling in the area with a with a normal brush so going in with the rust orange now same effect uh, getting the paint on the brush and then taking I'd say 70% of the paint completely off the brush and then brushing back and forth on the miniature um, with this I'm sort of going to be focusing the top side of the nose, the ears, top of the arms um, what this does if you sort of pull from the the top where the light would be hitting downwards it creates a sort of natural light effect as if there's a light source uh, the sun perhaps above the mini this just keeps it natural and I really like the effect and it's nice and easy too Got a bit of emerald green now. Well, I do need to do more to the face there, but I'll get the emerald green on the palette because there's going to be a lot of green on the miniature and just start filling in the areas before before the face dries and then I'll go back to that. So the tabard here, or I don't know what you'd call it, a little cape thing. little uh, Not a cape, but a little skirt type thing. Not really sure. But filling this in, this will uh, get some highlights later that will sort of distinguish it from the other greens of the area. But for now, we just want to get a couple, two thin coats, um, just fill that in. Going in now with the Curious Leather, really chocolatey brown sort of colour. I love this one. I think leather is really, really important, especially on fantasy miniatures. Just because if they're not in full plate mail armour, they're generally going to have like a lot of leather on the mini. So getting a nice combo or a nice um, recipe for good looking leather down is really important. And Curious Leather and Boar Hide, I think, just go superbly well together. So just filling in. All the parts that are going to be leather and now whilst I do that I'll just take a quick moment so the underside of the legs here perhaps the back of the boot um, the real underside of the gloves or the inside of the fingers of the gloves by the uh, the crossbow there that you might not be able to reach quite easily this is where the, having the, the black primer really helps just because those places look like they're a natural shadow um, you're not going to see them very easily so, you know, keeping them black, uh, like if you started with a white primer, for example, they would stand out, you know. So, yeah, really exemplified in these moments. Yeah, I really think it's important not to stress when you're doing these minis, especially such a fun, cool miniature as a Zuntalis mini. Okay. Back to the texture palette here and back to the rust orange. So going to reinforce the orange colors uh, on the on the face primarily of the fox here. So going to be focusing on the top side of the snout, if it's called that, of the face, of the brows and the top of the ears here. Not going to do the sort of sides as much or the arms. 
they're going to be left in shadow. All right, back to the emerald green. So what I'm going to do here is finish off the tabard uh, and the cloak. Now that the fur is completely finished, I won't be dry brushing anymore. I won't be spilling over any more orange onto these parts. So I can go back in fully with the green. What I'm doing here is putting the point of the brush into the corners and then dragging it into the open body of the area. That way you don't get any mess by then by doing the inverse, which would be pushing the color into the harder to reach areas, which I don't recommend. So continuing over the, the cloak here, just getting a general green base coat down and then I'll be going in uh, again with the green and instead of going all over this time with the, time with the second coat, what I'm going to do is focus the green towards the top of the creases, the top of the fold, the top of the hood and leave the sort of creases of the undersides of the hood or the underside of the folds, things like that, leave them a little bit darker um, just to create, create some nice easy shadows. Uh, instead of having to go back in later and add them, we could just do that step now. So what I'm doing now is mixing in a bit of Skeleton Legion with the Emerald Green to get this sort of nice soft green. I'm going to use this to highlight up the tabard just to keep it differentiated from the Skulky Yellow uh, Emerald Green highlights that will be on the cloak. Uh, so yeah, just concentrate on the raised areas here. Uh, leaving the folds, leaving the shadows, um, leaving them with the base emerald green. Cool, so going in now with some boar hide, um, I like to have this about, I don't know, a good amount of water in it because this color is really kind of a rich, reddy brown leather color and it blends really nicely with the curious leather you have underneath so doing it on the top side of everything you can see it there on the leg and the boots uh, and leaving the creases and the undersides of the the leather uh, dark so coming in now as i said with the skulker yellow mixed with the emerald green to get some uh, highlights and texture onto the the cloak and hood here doing these sort short sort of back and forth stabby uh brush strokes here to sort of build up a bit of texture it's really easy really simple um this effect might not be for everyone but i quite like it so i feel like it's it leaves the cloak uh, when it's done looking like it's made from nature or made from grass or something it's very vibrant very nature uh, fresh looking in my opinion leaving the undersides and the the recesses or the uh the folds of the cloak uh, leaving them darker so coming in now with white for the eyes, don't mix as much water into this as I would other colors, uh, just because I don't want to have to keep going over the white. I sort of want it to be done in one coat. Just because the more you, that you do or go over uh, intense details like this, the more chance there is of something going wrong. So I like to try and get them done in one. So yeah, with the white now, uh, bracing your arms on the table, holding your breath as you, as you do them, should be absolutely no problem. You've got quite big eyes, quite big details. Uh, on these minis compared to a lot of others so nice and easy really well I've got the white out what I've done is dried the brush off a little bit not quite as much as, uh, as the dry brushes from previous but what I'm doing with this is sort of starting halfway down the snout halfway down the ears and dragging the paintbrush towards the tips of those areas and what that does is deposits more white on the tip and less up the snout so you get a sort of gradient from a mix of orange and white to pure white. It's really effective for snouts, ear tips, tail tips, things like that. Mixed up a little bit of a different sort of brown, a different sort of woody brown, because I didn't have a, an exact wood that I wanted. So don't be afraid to mix colors. This is a bit of rust orange, boar hide, and curious leather, I believe. Uh, and it's just slightly different from the other colors, but it's still cohesive because I'm only using the stuff that I already have on my palette, right? Uh, there you are, there's the mix in the bottom left. Um, with the wood, what I like to do is just avoid the, the black recesses, avoid the grain on the sort of open body of the crossbow, uh, and just paint in between those bits, and it sort of has a simple, easy wooden effect to it. Don't need to worry too much. I really stressed about wood, painting like wooden effects uh, when I started, but 
just doing it that way is a lot easier I think so coming in now with the point here and the black um, again it's the same as the eyes it's just calming yourself down holding your breath uh, and trying to get it in one just because if you keep going over it as I said you're gonna gonna increase the risk of making mistakes so not too much water enough so it flows nicely but also uh, not too much that you have to go over the black to get a solid color and the eyes here especially you really want to get comfortable and just paint them in as gently as you can you can start small I'd say if, if don't don't try and draw the outline of the eye and then fill it in. Try and just do like a small pupil and then add a little bit to it by sort of moving the brush. Um, start with a dot and then move the brush to make the circle. That's how I do it anyway. Quite effective, I think. Quite cartoony. Works really well with these models. So we've got some Cercote Silver now. It's a really, really great silver. Um, you can see here from how easily it just goes. It covers everything. I'd still give it two, two thin coats just to be 100% but not all silvers uh, by all paint lines are made equally. This covers superbly well. So something I mentioned earlier but using the point of the brush into the recesses like there and then pulling it towards the main body uh, is how I do bits like this because essentially like a lot of this colouring for these Suntalis miniatures is it's almost like filling in a colouring book. You're just doing sort of blocky areas bit by bit and try not to spill between the lines. A great coverage on this gold. You just, I feel like you don't see that too much. Um, this goes on really nicely, really easily. A little bit of water in there, not too much, but you, can, but you can't see any of that black through it. It's really, really cool. Again, two thin coats. Um, this is quite a yellowy, quite a shiny gold. When we wash it with the flesh wash, it will become quite warm and worn which is the effect I'm going for. But if you wanted to highlight it after the fact, you can go back to this color. Um, but I like leaving it sort of worn. Okay, so coming in with some Oblivion Black Wash now on the dagger on the silver parts. Uh, there on the crossbow, you can see the bolt and the, I don't know, the size of it, whatever those little bits are called. Uh, and pulling the wash towards the cross guard of the dagger. What this does is it like concentrates more of the wash towards this end so it gets a little bit darker so the point of the blade is a bit shinier. I really like that effect. Oof, coming in now with the Skeleton Legion, just picking out all the uh, bits of stitching on the cape or on the gloves and I think there's one on the front of the tabard as well. You don't have to do this. Um, I quite like it to, have, to sort of just break up the cloak. Um, I feel like it's kind of cathartic to do all these little X's as well. Cool, coming in with the flash wash now. Yeah, so this is what's really going to make the gold. I also put a little bit of this on those um, little bits of stitching and rope and stuff from the previous step just to uh, dull down the Skeleton Legion into this sort of nice ropey colour, but yeah. So yeah, there we go guys, about an hour, hour and a half work and you get like a really nice, effective looking mini. I think this is achievable for everyone out there. Um, be sure to check out Two Thin Coats, uh, Transatlantis Games are wonderful, wonderful paints. Uh, check out the Zuntalis Painter Starter Set that will be coming out soon with a couple of guilds and some of the paints. And check out the Kickstarter for Zuntalis. Uh, lots of exciting stuff coming very very soon other than that leave a like and a comment just so we know that you appreciate or if you found this in any way useful or didn't anything leave that below um, and if it gets a good response uh, I can do more cheers guys